الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to another episode of fundamentals of faith in our previous episodes we discussed various acts that go against one's uluhiya or one's worshiping of Allah subhanahu wa taala for example talismans amulets bracelets charms also the veneration of graves and the building of mausoleums in today's topic, we're going to continue on that same trend and discuss another concept which, if misused and abused, can also go against one's uluhiyya, and this is the concept of shafa'a or intercession. Stay tuned. Today's topic is about the concept of intercession, which is called in Arabic shafa'a. Intercession is when somebody wants something from another person, another being, and he goes through an intermediary, an intercessor if you like, in order to get what he wants. So he doesn't go directly to the one that he wants that thing from. This can be divided into two major categories, worldly intercession and the intercession for religious reasons. A worldly intercession is when you want something related to this world. You want a job or you want to get married. In this case, you will approach the person who is responsible for what you want, for example, the owner of the company, you will approach him through somebody that he knows as an intercessor. So suppose you want to get hired in a certain company, you will go to a person who knows the boss of the company, who knows the person who is in charge of the company, and he will say to the boss or to the person in charge that I know this person, and he is qualified for the job. This is a worldly intercession. And this is allowed, this is allowed as long as the person is seeking something which is permissible. Obviously, if he's seeking something which is impermissible, if he wishes to purchase drugs, for example, or, or to take some alcohol, obviously, this intercession is not allowed. And it is also another condition for it to be allowed is that the person must be qualified for the job. So if someone seeks a position in a certain company and he goes through an intermediary or an intercessor, then obviously he must be qualified to get that position in the first place or else this intercession becomes impermissible. And a final condition is that when that person seeks an intercession for the position he wants, he does not trample over the rights of someone else. So suppose that there is a long queue of, let's say, 100 people waiting in line for something to happen. And the person is number 100. If he were to now seek an intercession to become number one, he would be trampling the rights of the other people who are before him in line. So this, again, is not allowed. So this is an intercession or shafa' for worldly reasons. And we said that these are the three conditions which are necessary in order to make such an intercession acceptable. However, our discussion is not about worldly intercession. Our discussion is about supernatural. It's about religious intercession. Where people go to beings or to holy saints or to other people in order to intercede to a deity. A person does not have a child. And he wants to have a child. So he prays not to Allah directly, but to another person. Or he says to a dead saint, or to an idol, or to whatever, is that intercede on my behalf. Petition Allah, plead to Allah on my behalf to get me what I want. And this is the type of inter intercession that we're, we're interested in, because this is a religious intercession. The right of intercession is a right which is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can intercede in front of Allah, except with Allah's permission. Allah says in the Quran, Surah Al-Zumar, verse 44, Say to Allah belongs all types of intercession. All types of intercession, of the religious intercession. All types belongs to Allah. And yet another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Zukhra, verse 86, is that no being except Him, except Allah, holds the right to intercession except with His permission. So these ayat and many in the Qur'an clearly outline that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who intercedes 
by his permission. Nobody can intercede in front of him until he allows. In other words, Allah controls intercession. Nobody has the right, nobody has the power to intercede in front of Allah unless and until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills that intercession. If such a right existed, it would go against the fact that Allah is the Rabb. Allah is the Rabb, He is the King, He is the Lord. He is the King of Kings, Malikul Muluk. It is not befitting that someone has the right to stand up and say, I will intercede on this person's behalf. Rather, this right, if it existed, would go against Allah's complete rububiyyah, complete lordship. Instead, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows people by His mercy, by His permission, to intercede. People whom He chooses, not people who choose themselves, no. Allah chooses, I will allow so and so to intercede. I will allow the prophets to intercede. I will allow the angels to intercede. I will allow this scholar and this martyr and this memorizer of the Quran and so on and so forth to intercede. All of this is up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He decides what He wills and no one can change His decision. This is the first condition that is necessary for a religious intercession. That Allah allows a person to stand up and intercede. As Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah verse 255, the Ayatul Kursi, the famous verse of the throne, which is the most beautiful and the most blessed verse in the Quran, the most powerful verse in the Quran, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, in this Ayatul Kursi, Allah says, مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ Who is there? It's a rhetorical question. Who is there that can intercede in front of him except with his permission? إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ You need Allah's permission to intercede in front of Allah. مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي There is no one. It's a rhetorical question. Who is there? The answer is there is no one. There is no one who can intercede in front of Allah except with Allah's permission. This is an Ayatul Kursi. And yet another verse in Surah Taha, verse 109, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yawma idhin, on that day, the day of judgment, la tanfa'u shafa'atu indahu. All intercession will be of no use to him. All intercession will be of no use, illa man adhina lahu rahman Except for those whom the Rahman, the ever merciful, has allowed to intercede. Wa radiyallahu qawla, and he is pleased with his speech. The person whom Allah allows and whom He is pleased with, this is the one Allah will say, I allow you, I give you permission to intercede. This is the first condition. Once again, this condition is proven over and over. In Surah Saba, verse 23, Allah says, وَلَا تَنْفَعُ الشَّفَاعَةُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا لِمَنْ أَذِنَ لَهُ No intercession is of any use in front of Him except to those whom He has allowed. So this is the first condition that Allah must allow a person to intercede. The intermediary must be given permission. Unlike in the worldly case, if you want to suppose, take a job at a certain company, and you go to an intermediary, then the boss of that company doesn't have to give permission to the intermediary. You just go to him, he'll immediately go to the boss. But this analogy is not applicable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is the Rabb. Nobody has the right to go to Allah and ask for permission, unless Allah allows that right. So this is the first condition. The second condition is that after Allah allows a certain person to intercede, then when he intercedes on behalf of other people, Allah must be accept and believe, Allah must be pleased with those people on whose behalf intercession is sought. In other words, once Allah has allowed a certain person to intercede, suppose it is a certain angel. He has allowed this angel, angel Jibreel or angel so-and-so to intercede. This doesn't mean that that angel has complete authority. Okay, now I want this person to go to Jannah, I want this person to go to hell. No. Once again, if this right existed, it would go against the complete rububiyyah, the complete lordship of Allah. On the contrary, even though these people and these angels have been given permission to intercede, once after they intercede, Allah will see. Whoever He is pleased with and He wishes to forgive, He will forgive. And whoever He doesn't, then that intercession will be rejected even though he allowed that person to intercede. This is proven in the Quran, in Surah, in surah Anbiya verse 27, Allah says, وَلَا يَشْفَعُونَ إِلَّا لِمَنْ ارْتَضَى They will not be able to intercede except on behalf of those whom he is pleased with. They will not be able to intercede except on behalf of those whom he has pleased with. 
In another verse in the Quran, Surah An-Najm verse 26, both of these conditions are mentioned. Both of these conditions are mentioned in the same verse. Surah An-Najm verse 26, Allah says, And how many are the angels? How numerous are the angels that are in the heavens whose intercession will be of no use? Whose intercession will be of no use except until Allah has permitted it from whom He wills and approves it. So Allah must permit the angels to intercede. And He must approve of those people on whose behalf intercession was sought. So this verse combines both of these conditions. We find that in this one verse Allah says that firstly the angels who intercede, they must be approved by Allah. Allah must allow them to intercede. Secondly, Allah must approve of those people on whose behalf intercession was sought. So we find then that intercession is the complete right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one can intercede on his behalf until Allah wills. And even after Allah has given that permission, then he must be pleased with those on whose behalf intercession is sought. Is this point clear before we move on? Because it's very important. A slight clarification. Yes. Sheikh. Um, what's the wisdom behind intercession mm -hmm. in regards to uh, when Allah has already decided who is fit to intercede mm -hmm. and uh, on whose behalf intercession is sought? Okay, this is a very good question. He's asking about the wisdom of intercession. Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow this intercession when He decides who will intercede and He decides on whose behalf intercession is sought? We'll take a short break and we'll come back and answer this question. Stay with us. Reviewing the second rule of Al-Meem as sakina That is the letter Meem. So if the first Meem is non-vowel or sakina followed by a vowel Meem. So I will merge the first in the letter and I will pronounce them as one. وَآمَنَهُمْ مِّنْ And we spoke abundantly on the virtues of seek a refuge with Allah from the outcast Satan. Especially for the first reciter, he's got to recite it out loud. وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الْبُرُوجِ أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فإذا جاءت الصاخة وإذا النفوذ زوجت Make sure it's ضمة وإذا النو وإذا النفوذ Thank you for joining us Welcome back. Uh, someone asked the question of the wisdom of intercession. What is the point of allowing intercession when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must allow that person to intercede and he must also be pleased with those people on whose behalf intercession is sought. If all intercession goes back to Allah, what is the whole point of intercession? Well, there's a number of factors to look at. The first factor is that had any person or any object had the right to intercede in front of Allah, this would go against Allah's complete lordship. No matter how blessed and holy a being might be, the angel Jibreel, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are still created by Allah. Allah created them and Allah sustains them. So they cannot have the right over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, Allah is the Rabb. So this right must be given, it must be allowed by Allah. Therefore, Allah will allow certain people to intercede. And this is a means of honoring them. This is the first wisdom. Mm -hmm. It's an honor. Isn't it a great honor that the Rabb, the Lord, the Malik, the King, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed this prophet or this angel to stand up on the Day of Judgment or even after that and to intercede on behalf of so-and-so? It is an honor. In fact, a great honor. So, and of course, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be given the lion's share of intercession. He will have the most, the biggest share of intercession. And this is the greatest honor to him. Allah will allow him to stand up on the Day of Judgment and intercede. 
in front of all of mankind. So it is the great honor that he has been given. Another benefit in wisdom is that this is a means of showing mercy to those on whose behalf intercession is sought. One of the ways that Allah will forgive the believers is through intercession. So there are various ways that Allah will forgive the believers. Of them is through tests and trials in this world. When a person goes through some tests and trials, his sins are forgiven. When a person loses a, a loved one and he is patient, his sins are forgiven. One of the ways in which Allah Jalla Jalaluhu allows a, a Muslim to be forgiven is through intercession. So the two wisdoms of intercession are, number one, that Allah, Allah, Allah honors the one who stands up to intercede. Because he is giving him an honor, the permission of interceding on behalf of other people. And number two, this is a means of showing mercy to the people on whose behalf intercession is sought. Now there are many types of intercession. There are many types of religious intercession. Some of them are general for all the believers and the angels whom Allah allows. Obviously Allah must allow them to intercede in the first place. Some of them are general. Of these types, number one is the intercession to raise someone in paradise to a higher level. So for example, a father and a son both enter Jannah. But perhaps the father has more good deeds than the son, so his position is higher in Jannah than the son. So he will ask Allah to intercede. He will intercede in front of Allah on behalf of his son after Allah obviously allows him to intercede. To raise his son's rank higher in Jannah in order to be with him obviously. Because the person wants to be with his loved ones. And this is the most common type of intercession. That people will be raised up in Jannah. Same with the husband and a wife. One of them might be more pious or have a higher place in Jannah. And obviously they will be together in Jannah. So if they both enter Jannah inshaAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow whom he wills to intercede. And if they intercede on behalf of their loved ones who are in Jannah, they will be raised to a higher level. This is one type of intercession. Another type of intercession is that, and this is common to all those who have been allowed intercession, is that someone might be destined to go to the fire of hell. On the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take account of all of mankind and divide mankind into two categories. Those that are going to the fire of hell, we seek Allah's refuge from being amongst them, and those that are destined to go to Jannah, may Allah make us amongst that category. So the people who are destined to go to Jannah, those who have been allowed to intercede, they will intercede on behalf of those whom they see in the other category. If Allah allows them to intercede, they will say, Oh Allah, so-and-so is my relative. So-and-so is my friend. So-and-so help me in this world. So-and-so did this and that. Please save him from the fire of hell. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He wills, once again remember, if He wills, if He desires, if He chooses, if He is pleased with that person, then He will allow that intercession to be accepted and take him out before he enters the fire of hell. The third category of intercession occurs after they have entered the fire of hell. That they be removed before their time that they have been allocated has completed. So their, basically their punishment is shortened in the fire of hell. And this too is a category which all of those whom Allah has allowed to intercede, they will be able to intercede if Allah agrees with the person whom they choose. So once again, a believer might say, Oh Allah, this person, he was my Muslim brother, even though he was sinful, this and that, please take him out of the fire of hell now. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He wills, if He desires, if He chooses, He will accept this intercession and allow this person to be removed from the fire of hell. These are categories which are specific to all of mankind and even the angels, those whom Allah allows intercession for. There are certain categories which are specific to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this shows you his high status. Of these specific categories that only the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can do is his intercession to start the actual reckoning, the actual accounting on the Day of Judgment. Because the Day of Judgment will be going on and on and on and people will become worried. They will say, let the accounting start. Let Allah come and let's start it. We don't want to stay in this punishment. The Day of Judgment in and of itself will be a type of punishment. Except for the really pious people. Otherwise, all, the other, all others of mankind will face the heat, will feel the thirst. And they will be scared of the Day of Judgment. Except the muttaqun the highest level of, of believers. So they will all go to the Prophet ﷺ and they will ask him to intercede on behalf of mankind. 
every single human being from the time of Adam until the day of judgment. They will all go to the Prophet and they will say intercede on our behalf in order for the day of judgment to start, the reckoning to start. And this is the high level called the Maqam al-Mahmud, the high, the praised station. Another type which is specific to the Prophet is the intercession on behalf of his entire ummah to enter paradise. And that no one remains in the fire of hell permanently. So the Prophet ﷺ will intercede, not just for one, two people like many other believers will, but for his entire ummah. His entire ummah, such that anybody who has a grain, a, an atom's weight of iman, will eventually be removed from the fire of hell. Even if they enter it, they will be removed eventually from the fire of hell. Yet another category which is specific to the Prophet wasallam is his intercession to open the gates of paradise. He is going to be the first one to go and knock on the gates of paradise and intercede in order for the gates of paradise to be open. So we see that the Prophet wasallam has been given many types of intercession which are specific to him. The logical question that arises is, should we ask directly from the Prophet wasallam these types of intercession? Well, let's go back to the sources and see what they have to say. When we turn to Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 1, and we've said over and over again that Sahih al-Bukhari is the most authentic book after the Qur'an. We turn to hadith number 614. And here in this hadith, the Prophet wasallam has told us of a beautiful dua, supplication, that we should say after every single adhan or call to prayer. The Prophet wasallam said, Whoever says when he hears the Adhan, O oh Allah, the Lord of this perfect call, meaning Islam, and of the established prayer, give Muhammad the highest place of paradise and also resurrect him in the position of intercession, Maqam al Mahmud, on the day of judgment, as you have promised him. Whoever says this, then his my intercession becomes permissible for him. Whoever prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the Adhan with this prayer, then my intercession becomes obligatory upon him. Now this prayer clearly tells us to ask from Allah, to ask Allah Azza wa Jal to grant the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the permission to intercede. The point is we pray to Allah to grant the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the right of intercession so that we can therefore be included in that intercession. In another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam clearly told us that on the day of judgment, Allah will tell him the people on whose behalf he should intercede for. And also that he will ask Allah permission in order to intercede. He will have to seek Allah's permission. Remember the two conditions over and over again. Allah allows the one who intercedes to intercede and then Allah is pleased with the people on whose behalf intercession is sought. So the Prophet ﷺ will firstly ask Allah to intercede. Secondly, Allah will tell him on whose behalf he should intercede. In a very beautiful hadith, Hadith number 7410 in Sahih al-Bukhari. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's a long hadith, we'll summarize it. He said that all of mankind will come to Adam and will ask Adam alayhi salam to pray to Allah to start the day of judgment. So Adam will say, I have committed a sin, go to Nuh. So they will all go to Nuh. And Nuh will also say the same thing and he will say, go to Ibrahim. They will then go to Ibrahim who will say the same thing and say, go to Musa. When they go to Musa, he will say, go to Isa. When they go to Isa, alayhi salam, he will say, go to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, will then go to the throne of Allah, prostrate in front of that throne, and ask permission to intercede. So Allah will say, raise your head. Ask and you shall be listened to. Intercede and your intercession will be accepted. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, And then Allah will allocate, will assign for me a portion. He will tell me this group of people I have to intercede for. So even the intercession of the Prophet ﷺ is something which Allah decides. He allows the Prophet ﷺ to intercede. And he also tells the Prophet ﷺ, that these are the people on whose behalf intercession is sought. So we ask Allah for the intercession. We say, O oh Allah, grant us the intercession of the Prophet ﷺ. O oh Allah, make us amongst the group of people on behalf of whom he seeks intercession. So we conclude this talk by stating that intercession is the right of Allah. 
We do not go to intermediary beings to ask for intercession. No, we turn directly to Allah Azza wa Jal and we say, Oh Allah, make us amongst those on whose behalf the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will intercede. This brings us to the conclusion of today's talk. We hope to see you next time. Until then, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Oh, 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 oh.